There's so much unknown when you're going into something where your body's on the line for a political reason. And people have a hard time letting go of the politics enough to think about the strategy and the tactic. And also how their action is gonna deconstruct narratives and tell a new story. So there's a lot of great organizations that do great story-based strategy work like um, the Center for Story-Based Strategy. And they, they do a really good job at that, but like how to marry that with direct action tactical training. So I decided that instead of orchestrating direct actions within the world we live in, I was gonna take well-known imagined worlds. So Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Wizard of Oz, The Simpsons, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, all of these places that people already spend a great deal of their time living and thinking about and deconstructing and saying like, okay, now you're going, we're gonna challenge those narratives. Like there's problems with Star Trek. There are problems within Harry Potter. Like the narratives fit within a dominant paradigm of white, militaristic, imperialistic, you know? And so it's like, there's tons of place to challenge, but we love them. We obviously do because we spend so much time in them. And so saying like, we're gonna go into those worlds with the, that clear confines of what that, the canon is for that world. And we're gonna develop direct actions based on these existing direct action tools. Um, and so I did my very first one ever here at the AMC like four, three or four years ago. And it was like the most fun I'd ever spent an hour and a half in my life. Like people dug deep into abolishing nuclear energy in Springfield, like in the world of the Simpsons and then House Elf Liberation in Harry Potter. Dobby has heard of your greatness, sir, but never has he been asked to sit down by a wizard like an equal. But in doing that, they were bringing themselves to it. They were like, why does this matter to me? Because while well, like thinking about the exclusion of people from magical education, like all the people in my life, they get excluded from education or the only type of education we get access to. So people were bringing themselves to it, and then we were talking about very real tactics of blockading and shutting things down. What are the things you have to think about? Who are the allies you have to think about that might exist in that world? And then saying like, so see, when you're in the world we have to live in, like that same process happens. And so it's just, just the same way that reading speculative and visionary fiction is instructive, living in those worlds and practicing the tactics and the, the applying the organizing principles is instructive practice of just getting into the routine of talking that way and thinking that way so that when you apply it to your, your everyday organizing life, it feels natural to do that. It's been a, a workshop that's evolved and now it's done in a lot of places. Adrian and Walida both do it now too and keep making it evolve and change and adding new worlds like so Alice in Wonderland, Willy Wonka, Battlestar Galactica, they all have been added in recent months as the participants bring to it the worlds that they've spent a lot of time in and thinking about the way that oppression plays out in these narrative worlds that we love so much and wanting to challenge that. There was a really great one that happened here at the AMC where um, a group of participants were in Star Wars, so a galaxy far, far away, and they were on the moon of Endor. They were Ewoks, but they recognized that there was an alliance, a potential alliance to be made with stormtroopers and like the Imperial soldiers who were just stuck on this moon and that there was probably a lot of distance between them and the Empire's mission and that they could probably work and talk with them to sh like sh take over the bases rather than blow them up but turn them into defensive outposts. But the, the whole bulk of their work was like, okay, how do we have that conversation with them? Like, how do we kind of feel out what their politics might be or be able to shape to be? And so like, it's less about what is the action that we're gonna take, but the process of getting there. Like, how do we say we all live on this moon together? How are we gonna make sure that the empire doesn't come down and blow us up? And so that was amazing and fascinating. There was also one that folks did um, uh, within Harry Potter where, and that's usually the one that people go the furthest with, um, but the one where they were really thinking a lot about um, the way in which education, like if you don't fit, if you can't fit into a classroom, you'd get denied education. And so they were talking about squibs, which in Harry Potter are people who are born into magical families but don't have magic and how they are just told to go assimilate into the real world and they don't get access to that. And they were like, that's really messed up. And that's a part of the story I love that makes me so sad. 
but they were also like, that's also something that's happening in our public schools every single day. Like kids who can't function in those classrooms, they just get through the school to prison pipeline, suspension, expulsion, like boredom, they just leave um, if they can't conform. And so they took the things that they had already been doing in their public school and they combined it with Hogwarts and they had this total like, they designed a teach-in that they were gonna do with the wizarding students about squib liberation and they were gonna have speakers and they invented this whole thing and I was like, that's real. Like you did that in real life and you're doing that now and like they were able to take it further with like leafleting campaigns and getting parents involved and finding, and the best part is like, like where can we find our squib elders? you know, who have survived this and probably did this before and like, where can we find them? And I was like, that's so real. That's like what we have to do. So those are like some of my favorite examples.